Hello everyone and welcome back to How to Make Custom Rockets in Kerbal Space Program. In this episode I'm going to talk about how to customize fairings with procedural fairings. And basically there are two ways to tweak your procedural fairings. One is to have a unique color like this one that I made for the black arrow. And you can see normally the procedural fairings do not come in red, but black arrow had a red fairing so I made one. And the other thing you can do is actually create a completely new shape. Basically, the fairings and procedural fairings come in two shapes. There's this egg-shaped one, and then there is this conic-shaped one, right? And unfortunately, the conic-shaped one isn't as tall a cone as most rockets have the cone. And the egg-shaped one, uh, well, it's probably the more useful of the two. But I noticed that there was a unique shape fairing thanks to Main Sailor. Main Sailor added this shape. This was a Soyuz fairing. And so if you have the Main Sailor texture pack for procedural parts, it also adds these fairing parts. And so this is a sort of special fairing shape. And thanks to that, I was able to then make a different fairing shape. And I'll tell you where that is. So this is the pointy fairing I made and so we can change the shapes now as well. So let's take a look at where the fairings are in your game data folder. Okay so taking a look in game data I've decided to put my modifications into a TR fairings folder and I'll link in the video description this as a zip file and uh, basically what we have in here is a single configuration file called new fairings and the textures. Now you can find the basis for all of this in procedural fairings and all you really need to use is procedural fairings and module manager. Those are the only requirements. But if we take a look at procedural fairings we see a bunch of textures. These are actually for the fairing bases. So if you wanted to change the color of the fairing base, let's say you don't like the, you know, we've got this a grayish color. It's sort of stockish in a way. Um, let's say you wanted to change that. Well, you wouldn't use this. You would use some sort of image editing program and you could take it in. And this goes for any texture files. Once you load it in here and it's, uh, there we go. You could, can easily just change this as long as you don't want both versions. If you want both the original look and a new look, you're going to have to create a new part. But if you just wanted to change this look, let's say you wanted it to be just white, you know, uh, you could just uh, change the brightness or hue. So you could just make it brighter and maybe up the contrast or you could decrease the contrast either way. And that'll avoid having to paint directly on it because you don't want to generally paint directly on the texture files to modify them. Now, if brightness and contrast aren't enough for you as far as changing the color of this, that gets a little bit more involved. Um, there are a few ways of doing that. Uh, one thing is just to create an overlay, a uh, new layer. Okay, and then uh, flood it with the color that you want. And so I'm going to, let's just, let's go red on this. All right, we don't want that so we want multiply and now you have a reddish sort of texture some bits are a little bit too dark so what you would want to do is maybe increase the brightness and adjust the contrast um, to suit exactly what shade you want where but now you can have a red fairing base if you really wanted to and that goes for any part a lot of times I get the stock parts and just make them brighter so that it makes them white. For instance, like the Concord nose, uh, I had to take the stock part. Um, it was stock extensions, I think, lack stock extensions, and it was gray. So I just wanted to bring it in and make it uh, just uh, white to match the rest of the Concord. And so that sort of thing happens. And that works for any texture, including the procedural fairings textures. So if we wanted to bring in uh, this nuclear fuel one, okay, uh, same deal. Uh, bring it in, and sure enough, it's one of these grayish textures. 
and maybe you wanted to lighten it up or change its color, well, you can do that now and just bring it in and save it straight. Uh, again, if you wanted to have multiple textures for a single part, that's something we'll have to cover some other time. All right, but the texture file that we want to use isn't the one in the procedural fairings folder because it's a bit plain and uh, not clear. The one I use is actually from Main Sailor, and remember Main Sailor created that new Soyuz fairing shape for us. And so Main Sailor is a procedural parts texture pack, so you'll have to go to procedural parts to get it. But um, in fairings under white, I use this texture as a base, this fairing one white, because I liked the look of the Main Sailor fairing textures more than the stock ones. And uh, not the stock ones, but when I say stock, I mean procedural fairing normal ones. And uh, uh, they have a darker interior, so the right side is the interior, the left side is the exterior, you can see. And in the game, we can bring up what this fairing texture actually looks like. So it comes up as um, egg shaped black procedural, white procedural. It's these. So it's just uh, plain like this. It has little markings you can sort of see. And we can extend the size to, oops, make it a little bit clearer. But so I use this as a base and just sort of modify this in order to get my other ones. And the way I do that is just bring it in here, load it up. And uh, if I wanted to paint this side, it's very simple. This is already a nice light color. I don't change the interior. I don't care about the interior. Um, and again, just make a new layer. And let's say this time I've got a lot of colors already. What color don't I have? Um, I, I think I've got, I don't think I've got orange actually. Maybe I don't have orange. Let's Let's try orange. So I'm just going to fill this layer with orange. I've already selected this size. And again, we can just multiply and so that we get the bottom textures that are distinctive to main sailor. And that's that. You've got your you've got your new fairing color. And now we saved it. And I'm going to save it in my own texture folder to avoid confusion. So going to TR textures here and we are going to have make it a DDS file per normal. And we don't have to worry about orientation. Oh, sorry, this is the TR texture folder. I meant TR fairings. TR fairings folder and fairing textures in here. We don't have to worry. Oh, I already have an orange. But anyway. Uh, we don't have to worry about orientation because that was already done properly by Main Sailor in the first place. Uh, fairing orange 2. Okay, so now we have a new fair orange fairing texture. But again, as usual, we need to make sure that the game recognizes it and loads it. And that we do in our configuration file. So, here is notepad and I don't need this file. What I want is in my own little folder. I've got this new fairings file. Ignore this top part for a sec. That's to create a new part for a new shape. What we want to focus on is down here where it says plus part KZ procedural fairing side one. And in this case it also includes an after realism overhaul. The reason you have to do after realism overhaul is because realism overhaul changes the maximum temp and skin temp of the fairings. So uh, if you are using realism overhaul, you want to make sure that it's after realism overhaul so that it already changes the temperatures and you don't have to change them over and over and over again in your configuration. Um, so at name uh, KZ procedural fairing side one arrow is what I called the black arrow one, but we need a new one now. And let me find my orange one. Here's the orange one. So it's referencing the original part, which is KZ procedural fairing side one. And this is the egg shaped one. And we want to have 
a new part, which will be egg-shaped as well. And I've renamed it, adding orange to the name. And th in this case, it's orange too. And I'm referencing the object. Okay, so here's the trick. If you're going to retexture something like this, retexture an existing model. Now, you don't have to do this if you're just going in and changing the texture directly, right? Uh, so if you were just going directly into one of the textures, like into near future and just changing the texture directly, that's easy. If you want to change the texture on a new model, basically make a new part out of it, then you reference the model and add texture equals, you have to know the object name. The object name is the object name in Blender or whatever 3D program was made in. It's not the object name in Kerbal Space Program. You're not necessarily going to know this object name unless it was referenced by the person who created the, text, uh, the part. And sometimes a single part can be multiple objects. So you have to be cognizant of that. And But anyway, this is telling um, module manager to replace the texture on this new part that I'm creating, replace the texture on this object with this texture, and that's the folder I put it in, and we need fairing orange 2. And this is the title, this is what it, sh what it shows up as in Kerbal Space Program, and so we want fairing orange 2 because we already have a fairing orange. So that's how you add a new side for procedural fairing. It's not that big a deal, and you can see all the other ones I've done here, the purple, the yellow, steel, steel 2. And if you are adding a part based on KZ proc fairing side 2, that's the typical conic one. Okay, and so we have all of these textures added to the conic one. I'm, I'm not going to make the orange, well, okay, fine. We'll make the orange conic one too. So we copy this block. And again, you'll have this file from the video description to base your stuff on. So side two. Side two orange two, otherwise it will conflict with the other one we made, right? And uh, But we can reference the same texture. You can reference the same texture as often as you want. And we're going to call it orange conic two. Okay. So when we load this, we should have two new parts uh, and they will be colored orange. Now, the other issue is how to change the shape of your procedural fairing. And remember, I had this new pointy Soyuz fairing and that's here. Basically what I did here was, you can see it's based on the main sailor one. And so I highly suggest that if you're going to do all this, you get that main sailor uh, texture pack but I mean you could still take this and if we take side one or actually I think this is a side two type but it doesn't matter you're changing the shape anyway you can take the side one here and modify that as a basis and rename it so what you would do if you're just using procedural fairings is just take this copy put it into your configuration like so. And so this was the end of the previous part. This is now a new part. It's not referencing another part. Everything down here is referencing another part. This is a brand new part that we're creating. And we will call it uh, EDB fairing special. Okay. I'll blame myself for the results of this. Okay, we're still going to use the procedural fairing side model. Uh, or you could use the main sailor one as we've got here. And uh, here we've got uh, the texture being referenced. And the case of this part, uh, I maybe we'll use the default texture. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just go with this. We we're not going to change the texture on this one. We'll just change the shape. And we're going to need, uh, okay, EDB special fairing. We definitely need to change that title otherwise it won't be dip, uh, it won't show up differently from the other part the original part and we are going to so there's a procedural fairing size and here is the information about the shape okay so nose to height ratio and if we take a look at the pointy one right I've made this pointy shape 
I have a nose height ratio of four. So the taller you want it, the higher that number will be. If we go back to Kerbal Space Program briefly, uh, this was a conic shape. Whoops. Um, this is, okay, we'll put them side by side. Uh, see, this cone part is basically half of the shape and then it goes all the way down. Here, the cone part is, I mean, I, I guess it's not really half the shape, but you can see this cone part is, okay, actually taking them off, just, just picking them up was probably a better comparison. So, hmm, maybe if we set this to auto shape first. Okay, here we go. This cone shape, right, this cone shape is double the height of this cylindrical side. This cone shape is four times the height of the cylindrical part. And so that's what the number is adjusting. So the taller you want this uh, conic area or the egg-shaped part, the higher the number will be. The stubbier you want it, the lower the number will be. There we go. <laughs> Uh, trying to figure out how to explain these things. Okay, the shape is, uh, so this is the base shape, and I haven't really filled around with that before. Uh, so if we take a look, the base cone shape, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.9, 1, and here, uh, the one that comes with uh, default by default is 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 1.5. I, I don't know too much about that. The... Um, but you can mess around with it and experiment. Actually, let's let's do an experiment. This says 0.3.3.91. Uh, this says 0.3.2. I wonder what happens. This is going to be really special. 0.4.4, because neither of them has that. And uh, this one, let, let's say 0.9 and 0.5. Basically, you're just going to have to experiment with different shapes for all this stuff and uh, on that I'll just let you go at it and you're going to have to I suggest making a small install with just procedural fairings and module managers so that you can reload frequently and this will be a completely experimental fairing and who knows what shape this is going to end up being uh, nose cone shape 0 0.5 there this one was 0.25 let's have a 0.4 and then this is 1 and 0.7 on the third and fourth number and this one up here, much closer together, 0.52 and 0.45. Let's see what happens with 0.9 and 0.8. This total experiment, I have no idea what shape it'll come up to be. So this is all experimental for me too. And why don't we have a nose type ratio of three? Okay, so we have our new fairing and we are curious to see what this looks like. So we're going to save that, but there's one other point, and that's to deal with realism overhaul. Remember, realism overhaul modifies all the existing parts, and we're basically on these new textures um, building after the realism overhaul has changed those parts. But if we create a new part, realism overhaul doesn't know about it yet, so it can't have its own configuration of it with its own temperatures. So to make sure that our new special part has a proper realism overall configuration, we need to make sure its name is referenced in this sort of block where it says at part, new part name, for realism overhaul, RSS config true, uh, title, payload fairing, EDB special, just gotta get rid of all that other stuff. And the crash tolerance, max temp, skin, max temp are the same. I don't know if this will work exactly right or not, but it's probably good enough. So we're going to save. It used to be that I would go directly into the realism overhaul folder and add the stuff directly to it in fear that it wouldn't load it properly otherwise. So in realism overhaul, uh, RO recommended mods, and procedurals, we have procedural parts, configurations, and textures, so, uh, and fairings. So I modified this file and added textures in here, as you can see. So that's how I used to do it, but we'll try, and let me delete those so that uh, we're not getting tricked. 
we will see whether it's loading properly from my exterior folder. And with that, let me load the game. Okay, so let's take a look if we got what we were trying to get. Um, orange, right? Well, Orange Conic 2. Well, let's see. Well, that's a typical conic one, and indeed it is it is orange. And it, uh, I, I don't know about the Mac. Uh, it seems like 1000 and 2000 is what it ends up being for all of them, even the ones configured by Realism Overhaul. You know, this hasn't been touched by me. It's 1000 and 2000. doesn't match the numbers that we actually put in for the Realism Overhaul bit, so I don't know why, but we'll leave it be. 1000 uh, max temp on the internal and 2000 on the skin is fine. I have no problem with those numbers. And um, yeah, we had the orange conic and we also had the regular orange uh, egg shaped. And we can see that those oranges are different from the original orange. That's a different shade. <laughs> I really don't need two different oranges, but it's okay. It's okay. What about that funny shape we created? Well, let's see, where is that? A EDB special. What shape did it turn out to be? It turned out to be this shape. It's not a very common shape, but again, as long as you keep the numbers sort of in a similar relationship to each other as the original numbers that you see in the conic fairings or egg shape fairings or the Soyuz fairings in, I mean, main sailor, you should get a reasonable result. Uh, I, none of the numbers should exceed one, I don't think. Uh, though you could try it, I don't know what's going to happen if you make one of those numbers exceed one. So again, uh, going back to configuration here, we're talking about uh, these, this base cone shape, these four numbers, and also this nose cone shape, these four numbers. No idea what happens if they go past one. Uh, you can try and find out. It might crash your game. I don't know. Uh, and of course, you can change the nose height ratio as well. If we take a look back at Kerbal Space Program, we see that, in fact, um, if we just have this on its own, the nose cone part of it is three times the height of this part. Anyway, so that gives you a basic idea of how to make your own procedural fairings. I should note that uh, it doesn't matter how old the main sailor pack is, you can use those textures from any version and they'll still work. Uh, so if it turns out that you don't have one that's for 1.2.2 or 1.3 uh, with the main sailor textures, you can just use them. That should be fine. And similarly, uh, if you create your own textures, you should be able to import them from version to version without any problems. So yeah, I think uh, I'll wait and see if you guys have any questions. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else I have to cover about this. And again, I'll link the examples that I've done in the video description. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.